we use antithetic variables to reduce the variance of Monte Carlo here. So we implemented Monte Carlo in the last lesson, but we noted that Monte Carlo does converge very slowly. That if you want double the accuracy, you have to do four times the work. So there are variance reduction techniques with Monte Carlo that save you time. So you get a more accurate answer. In particular, you know, here we know what the analytic solution is. So now what we want is for our numerical approach, Monte Carlo, to be close to the analytic, analytic one. So then at least we have our basic engine tuned. In computing call options in Excel. We're using Excel to compute our call options and we're now going to be using antithetic variables to reduce the variance of our Monte Carlo solution within that. This improves the accuracy of our results with only a minor modification. So it's not a big project taking up loads of your time. So on to the variance reduction. So as we mentioned in the last video, Monte Carlo gives us a pretty good answer, though it's slow to converge. So you can get a rough answer pretty quick. Now if you want an answer which has basically greater accuracy, it gets harder and harder. So basically the rate at which Monte Carlo converges is 1 over the square root of n. So to get it 10 times more accurate, you have to do 100 times more work. So what we used here was the antithetic variables. We'll, we'll just hop to the code again where we can see what's going on. So here's the code. What we have to do to get the lower variance, the greater accuracy, is work it out twice. So instead of just getting our simulation or getting our estimate for the call option, where we set the initial value of the share at S0, the one, the value that we're given, we do it twice. So we have S1 and S2, both of which begin at the current share price. Then both are evolved as a log normal process. So S1 changes, it, go, it increases by S1 times mu plus delta t plus a square root of delta t times sigma term for the Wiener process, part of it. And random one is using the function in Excel, which is a random variable from a normal distribution from 0 to 1 or with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. So S2 is evolved in exactly the same way. Now that doesn't mean that they're equal because the random variables are different. So after one step, you know, S1, the first two parts are the same because S1 and S2 are equal at the beginning. Mu and delta t are the same, but random one and random two are different. So maybe S1 is a share price that has begun by going up 
while S2 might have begun by going down. Now we iterate this, we have n steps. So we take n steps where S1, again, it could end up with n steps going up, and S S2 could be n steps going down. Or it could be up and down, up and down, whatever combination, since they are random. So after taking the n steps, we end up with S1 being equal to whatever it is, and S2 being equal to whatever it is. So then we continue, and we're trying to work out what the option price is. So the way we do that is if the share price is below the strike price, then the call, the value of the call option is zero. If the value of the share is greater than k, then we subtract k from the price and we discount using the risk-free interest rate. So we do this for both S1 and S2. Now here's the part where our trick comes in. So we we have our estimate for using Monte Carlo for the option price is the average value of S1 or S2. But what we do here is instead of using the average value of S1 or the average value of S2, we take the average of them both. So all we do is 0 0.5 times S1 plus S2. Instead of just having plus S1. The benefit of that is now S1 could have been up, 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 and S2 could have been down, down, down. But if you take their average, their variance is less. And since we're trying to reduce the variance, that's a handy thing. So that means we double the amount of work that we do, since we have to work out S1 and S2, but we reduce the variance by a lot, by roughly a half. So that's why we do it. Since otherwise to half the variance, we'd have to do four times the work. This is only one of many options that we have to reduce the variance.